A multiple regression analysis should be carried out when you are looking at which variables predict a particular outcome. Within this specific example, we will be looking at if physical fitness and depression predict daytime sleepiness. If you are compiling your own data, use the first two columns of your data set for your predictors and the third column for your criterion. To carry out the multiple regression, go into Analyze, then Regression, and then Linear. Move your criterion, in this example Sleep, into the Dependent box. Then, move your predictors into the Independent box. In the Method box, Ensure Enter is selected so that a standard multiple regression is carried out. Click the Statistics button and select, select Estimates, Confidence Intervals, Model Fit, Descriptives, Part and Partial Correlations and Colonarity Diagnostics. In the Residuals section, tick the Casewise Diagnostics and Outliers outside three standard deviations before clicking Continue. Then click Options and select Exclude Cases Pairwise in the Missing Value section and then click Continue. Next, Select Plot. Move asterisk Z resid into the Y box and asterisk Z cred into the X box. Then click Normal Probabil Probability Plot in the Standardised Residual Plots before selecting Continue. Finally, click Save and select Mahalanobis and Cooks in the Distances box. Click Continue and then OK and your output will be generated. If we look at the output, the first table is Descriptive Statistics which shows the mean, standard deviation and total number for each variable. In this case, it shows the descriptive statistics for both predictors, physical fitness and depression, and the criterion, sleep. These statistics, at a first glance, give us an initial idea of the differences between each group, in addition to allowing us to check that all data has been input into the data set. The second table we come to is the correlations table, which shows us at a first glance how the different variables interacted with each other. For instance, our example shows a small negative correlation between physical fitness and daytime sleepiness, whereas depression has a small moderate positive correlation to sleep. However, it is important to note that we must consult the other statistics to see the true extent to which these factors predict daytime sleepiness. Next, we come to Model Summary. This is where we will find our R-squared value for reporting how much of the variance in the criterion in this example daytime sleepiness is explained by the predictors depression and physical fitness. You would report this by multiplying the R squared value by 100 to obtain a percentage then report this as N percent of the variance for the criterion can be accounted for by the predictors. For this particular example we would re report it as 24.7% of the variance in daytime sleepiness can be accounted for by depression and physical fitness. 
if you're using a small sample size you would use the adjusted R squared value. The ANOVA table is where you will find your related F value. This is used to assess the overall statistical significance of the model. To report this, you combine the related F value to your R squared value and present it as R squared equals the R squared value from the model summary table, comma F bracket the regression degrees of freedom, the residual degrees of freedom, bracket equals the F value. You then report the statistical significance of this effect with P equals the significance value, followed by whether this is significant or not in brackets. Alternatively, you could report the significance as P is less than or greater than 0 0.05. Let's use our example to make this easier to digest. To report this, we would use R squared equals the R squared value from the model summary table 0.247, comma F bracket, the regression degrees of freedom Two, the residual degrees of freedom 244 bracket equals the F value 40.109 we then report the statistical significance as P equals 0 0.000 followed by significant in brackets this could also be reported as P is less than 0 0.05 or P is less than 0 0.01. The coefficients table is where we will find the values to assess which predictor contributes greatest to the criterion. To do this, we would need to look at the beta column under standardised coefficients, looking at the largest value, disregarding any negative signs. It is also important to check that these effects are significant. A large beta value suggests that a change in the predictor variable will have a large impact on the criterion variable. Next, we consider the t values for each variable in conjunction with its significance. A large t value paired with a small significance value suggests the predictor value is having a large impact on the criterion value. When reporting this information, you need to report these values for each predictor variable. You would present this as beta equals the beta value for that predictor, t equals the t value for that predictor, and p equals the significance for that predictor, followed by whether this is significant or not in brackets. Again, you could also report the significance as p is less than or greater than 0.05. Let's try this using our example. We'll report the statistics for depression. To do this, we would use beta equals the beta value of 0.442, t equals the t value of 7.561, and p equals 0.000. .000 followed by significant in brackets. The significance could also be reported as P is less than 0.05 or P is less than 0.01. The following tables in the output would not be used when doing a standard multiple regression.
And that is how you do a standard multiple regression in SPSS.